Welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly. My co-host for today's show is Janet Corsi, and our guests are Anthony Marsis... How do you say that, Anthony? Marsisovsky. Marsisovsky, okay. And R. Thomas McPherson. And the topic of the show is promoting your book to the public. Our first guest is Anthony. And Anthony, tell us a little bit about you. I know you're the owner of Copper Cat Books here in Henderson, Nevada. So let's get a, give us a little background on who you are. Well, uh, I was, grew up in basically in the middle of a cow field in upstate New York, central New York, uh, which is Utica, Rome, Syracuse area. I, when I got out of high school, I went in the Navy for six years, got out of the service, went back home for several years uh, in trade as a machinist, most of the part, which is one of the topics of conversation that me and Robert McPherson had because he's done a little bit of that over his life. Uh, did, got tired of getting laid off all the time, so I went back to school for business administration. I got When I got done with school, I went to work with actually my wife, uh, who owned the collection agency at the time. And we grew that, grew that, grew that. And then once we moved, uh, we were actually we were getting tired of the snow and the cold in central New York. So we, no. we moved. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It gets cold there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I actually, it was nice when I was younger. I used to really like the snow and the cold and the 20 below zero and go snowshoeing <laughs> in the middle of the night. But as I got older, it just said, no, I don't want to be like my father and complain about the cold weather. So I uh, convinced Wendy to move out here. Well, actually, she had a really good job as a consultant at the time as well. So her company that she was doing a lot of work with said, well, if you move out to Las Vegas, we'll give you all the work that you can handle. Oh, right. Because it's... Um, relatively inexpensive to fly out of Las Vegas because all the major airlines, so everybody wants you to come to Las Vegas. So yep. once you get here, they don't mind if you leave either. <laughs> they, they, want, they want the next We assume up. we have your money already, so yeah. it's okay yeah. to yeah. go. Yeah, that's like Wendy yeah. and I always say when we see a load of plane coming in, oh, come on, come on, come on. Thank you, <laughs> thank you no inc- state income tax, Nevada. Um, so then we moved out here, and uh, I worked with Wendy some more out here as a trainer, technical writer, went to work in the casinos, did a little cooking, uh, oh. got talked into getting my CDL by a co-worker, so I got my commercial driver's license, and then we started a trucking company. Did that for several years, and then when the economy tanked in 2008, well, mm. we said, well, there wasn't much money to be made because they were wanting to pay us the equivalent of a dollar a mile. And it was costing a dollar a mile just in fuel, never mind the maintenance, <laughs> right. insurance, yeah. all that other upkeep. Eating. On it. Yeah. Paying your own bills. <laughs> um, so I, st- I told Wendy, I said, well, let's put the stuff up for sale. If we sell it, great. If not, we'll just hang on. I mean, because everything was paid for, so we could keep on going. Yeah. Um, is just pick and choose our loads. You're right. And then sold the equipment. The Encore opened, which is the major strip casino. Right. So I went. To, I applied for a job as a cook there, and I got hired there. So I worked there for eight years. Wow! And I, if anybody, any of you guys have ever done cooking commercially, it's not fun. After a while, it I actually was a cook for four years. Were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you you know what it's like. It's it, if you're with the right group of people, it can be a lot of fun. But sometimes after a while, you just get uh, it's too much. So what made you want to start a bookstore? Well, actually, that went back to where we first moved to Las Vegas. Uh, there were a lot of bookstores here at the time. I think there was at least about eight or at least eight of them, nice used bookstores. And uh, as they started closing little by little, we'd go into it. And, well, we, you know, there'd be a big sign up closing, you know, closing sale. And we'd talk to the owners about, oh, geez, you know, what would it take to get into this? And we thought we, we looked at buying several of them over the years. And it was always easier to do something that you were already doing yeah and one yeah. of them that i was really had an interest in my i tried to talk my brother into it and he's going well i don't know is you know people aren't reading and blah 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 so i use that for an excuse to chicken out of that one but uh once i got tired i left the casino i had an opportunity to get a lot of books really cheap at an auction so i Ooh. i bid on them i got the books said, okay now i got all these books which is about fifteen thousand. W- books worth what do, right. what do i do with them and i was on this phone app you guys may be familiar with let go and i says i was looking for bookshelves i found some really nice bookshelves 
So I got some really nice bookshelves, bookstore quality bookshelves. I said, okay, now I got books. I got a bookshelf. <laughs> now what? Now what Aww. do I do? And then Wendy found another guy that had a load of books that he had won at an auction, but he didn't want the books. He just wanted all the furniture as one of these storage unit auctions. Uh. So he bought more books. I said, okay, now I got even more books in storage, and I have books, you know, shelves. So what am I going to where do? We do? So then the hunt was on for finding a place to put them. And uh, Wendy and I were driving down the road. Says, oh, geez, there's a store for rent. And the rest, and then the store, the space we looked at, actually, we did not rent. We rented one in the next building over, which was actually a little bit larger space. And uh, at hindsight was, oh, my God, this is pretty big space, you know, which is about 2,000 feet. And we thought, well, how are we going to fill all this? Now the problem is not enough. Books. I need more space. Uh -huh. um, so we still have a lot of books in storage. Oh, I thought you had. I thought you had more space than you needed. Oh no, 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 no. We we thought we were going to, but we kept the book. Like one of the guys that I bought all these fifteen thousand or so books from initially, he called me up and he goes, "Hey, Tony, uh, I got some more books. I'll give you." Give, make me an offer on them. So we negotiated back and forth. I got a good price on those. So I had another storage unit of books. <laughs> so so that's how the bookstore was born. Yes. And we're going to go into this more into in depth on this in a minute. We're going to talk about the importance of having that store. Because your story of getting up to that point is great. But we need to know how you're helping the community, and you really are. And, and we talked about this a few minutes before we went on the air. So we're going to get into that more in a okay. minute. Yeah. I do want to introduce our second guest, which is R. Thomas McPherson. And I'm going to give him a little bit about your background, if that's okay, Robert. All right. Sure. All right. Uh, when he was old enough, he joined the military. Upon leaving the military, he worked for a security company. Uh, during this time, he started a heavy metal band in Houston called Works. Uh, he was the lead singer. Then uh, he, he did the club circuit for a while, and one night when his voice broke on stage, well, kind of like he ended his career. He couldn't talk for a week. Um, yeah. So he was so angry about life at that time, he turned his life experiences into a comedy career. And I'm going to read this a little bit from your background. <laughs> a few of his friends had enough of him being grumpy, so they took him to a comedy club. It was amateur night. After heckling the people on stage, the manager of the club was so upset, he said, let's turn up the lights and see if we have any comedians in the audience, which I guess was me, you. <laughs> six, six fingers at the table were pointing at Robert. Next thing you know, he was on stage talking about his cats. <laughs> he won the amateur night. Uh, when the manager came up to the table to give him the prize money, he said, I have an opening on Wednesday night. How would you like to come to work for me? The Angry Man show was born. Comedy became his form of therapy. After two and a half years and having vented all of his anger, the show folded. He went back to a mundane life. It was at this time in his, his life that he started to write. It wasn't that much of a stretch to go from telling stories on stage to telling stories on the page. Nonetheless, he had much to learn. Five books and 247 rejections later, his first book was published by a small publishing house. Hostile Waters in 2017 was the book. Three years later, the owner of the publishing house passed away shortly, and we will talk about that a little bit too, because this actually happened to another one of our authors. Yes. Shortly thereafter, the IRS contacted him and asked him for the money the, for the book sales. <laughs> the owner was less than honest. The company was closed, and the rights to my books reverted. The rights to his book reverted back to Robert. That's when he decided to self-publish. New Atlantic Industries was born. He started the. He started off with the convention circuit. From there, he had two or three people at the convention telling him they had a book and they were looking for a publisher. Robert promotes his work on a lot of social media, and we were talking about that, Anthony, as well. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. Then one day, he went to work at a movie theater. Or you went to a movie. You went to a movie at a movie theater. Movie. Yeah, I and mean, when you got there, you saw an ad on the screen that said, we promote local businesses. And I'm very familiar with what you're talking about. He thought, wow, I could advertise myself and authors in the movie theater. He started creating trailers for books. However, the first couple of trailers were, trailers were rejected because they were not deemed suitable. Then, finding the right equipment and software, he began to perfect the ads. When Robert says, what Robert says he loves the most about publishing others is helping them realize their dreams. So that really launched the publishing company big time because now you had a really great way of advertising and getting those people out there. Uh, what did I leave out? What else can you tell us about um, R. Thomas McPherson? Um, he's a crazy guy. That's <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> pretty much all. I mean, yeah, that pretty much covers all of it. 
I mean, there's a lot of stories that go along with everything. So, um, like how I originally met Anthony, that was kind of a story unto itself. And this is um, important, what you're going to tell. I want you to tell that story because what we're talking about is promoting your books to the public. And it was the way you were promoting your books to the public that introduced you to Anthony in Las Vegas, and you're in Houston? Yes. So this well, isn't important. Austin, yeah, so tell that story. Well, um, I decided to go ahead and go to a Star Trek convention. Honestly, I was about ready to quit writing altogether. But what happened was I said to myself, you know, I'm going to go enjoy the Star Trek convention. And I went and I had 30 copies of each book. I only had two books at the time. And the, the first book sold out after two days. And like towards the very end of the convention, I actually met Anthony. And Anthony actually ended up buying the second book, Third Dawn. And it was, it, I was like floored with the response. I ended up walking away with like two copies of the second book, and that was it. Now, how, says, okay, how many years ago was that? How many years ago was that? Now, oh, five, um, or five or six? Eight. I was going to say five or oh. six, seven. Yeah, it's it's quite a while ago. It was like our first, <laughs> first been, or second. Been, somewhere along there. Like, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> but um, what was amazing was the next year I went ahead and came back to that convention, the Star Trek convention. And five minutes after the door was open, Anthony was standing in front of my table goes, I'm going to get book one this year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true story. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty fantastic. So, well, and it was just the beginning of a lot of connections and people that I met. And um, we talk about promotion and conventions for me have been the number one source up until this point of meeting people. Um, it, another story, very interestingly enough, um, I met a gentleman by the name of Jack Trevino. Now, I don't know if any of you know who he is, but he wrote one of the S Deep Space Nine Star Trek episodes called Little Green Men. He also wrote a couple others, but this one was important. But he also wrote a fan film called Of Gods and Men. Mm -hmm. I met this guy. He was coming around. He had a press pass on. This was actually the same year I first met Anthony. And I started talking to him. And we're just going back and forth and, you know, having a really good time. And um, I started talking about Of Gods and Men. I says, you know, this was a great story. It put together all the Star Trek stuff. It came from all, all old episodes and, and really made a great story. Right? He says, oh, okay. You know. And five minutes later, he walks away, and the lady at the next table looks over at me and says, you do know he is the man who wrote that story, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Which, and I mean, it, it all came about because uh, another one of the books, he came to me a couple of years later and says, um, my uncle really wants to get published. And I looked at that and go, okay, send me the manuscript. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to say something nasty to friends. Right, right, right. right? And I, I looked at it and I was floored. I could not believe this guy had been writing since 1980, had written nine books, ten books, and none of them had ever been published. So I, I looked at Jack and I said, you know, I think we can deal with this. Uh, why don't you? Well, here, let me give you a contract. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, and Peter J. Flores was 93 years old uh, when he got his first book published. Fabulous. So that's great. And, that is fabulous. And his his second book, and that was hurrah for the class of 05. His second book, I made sure, came out for his 94th birthday. Wow. Um, the sad part about it was before we could get the third book out in the hurrah series, uh, he passed away. But he, one of the his life dreams was to be a published author. And 
I was very, very happy to make that happen for him. That is the story. That's a great, great story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I I was very happy for him. You know, the stories are great. They deserve to be published, and I wanted to make that happen for him. So, how did you transcend that, that, from publishing your own work to publishing someone else? Well, oddly enough, I kept going to conventions and people. In short, I got tired of people saying, "You know, I have a book. <laughs> I, yeah, I I, I, I want to get published." And, I was fine. and actually, what finally broke the straws, the camel's back, was um, a lady named Claudia K. LeBaire. Uh Oh, you can't see it. Uh, hydrogen runner. Um, she I met Claudia, and, says, and I says, "You know what?" I said, "You know what? Just go ahead and send it to me." Yeah. Uh, and I thought to myself, you know, there is no problem with me doing for somebody else what I have done for myself. Mm -hmm. I learned enough about the publishing industry. I says, you know, I can go ahead and do this. And, and, and as time goes on, I'm realizing I didn't know as much as I thought I did. <laughs> uh, none <laughs> of us do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's life. <laughs> yeah. So um, Claudia was actually my, my first author. As a publisher, so, and she she is she's a wonderful lady. She's 63 years old. There again, another person who had wanted to had been wanted to be published for quite some time, and there again, I was happy to make that happen for. Her. And you know, I met her at a Star Trek convention with you this year. With me, yeah. yes. We were both there this year. Yeah. 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 And. She 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 is a wonderful person, and I'm I'm very glad to have her a part of the New Atlantic Industries family. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, the, what I what I'm trying to do with this show is show that in promoting yourself, oftentimes we talk about events and we talk about how sometimes they can be quite costly. Um, you have you have a, a I won't say a gimmick, but you have a way of presenting yourself and with your work. And with other authors, so that it's to your advantage to go to these conventions, because you're not only selling oh, your yeah. work, you're selling other authors' works as well. So when you're paying for that table, you have more than one venue there. You have your work, you have your other authors' works, and that's what attracts people. Well, I have a total of nine books right at the moment. We just released uh, the Wastelands uh, the middle of last month. Which, by the way, I'm going to say this on air so that everybody knows, Digital to Draft, you've talked about it, you've had interviews with it, that is the greatest company I've ever, and that is... Draft to Digital. The one I just... Draft to Digital. Did I say Draft to Digital? <laughs> draft to Digital. Go, 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 You're just, go. You're just excited. <laughs> but he's excited because they are a good company. <laughs> they really are a good for, company. For the right reason, yeah. It, it, and... I put that book out through them with bypassing everybody else and uh, I've had nothing but an absolute tremendous response from from the customers from them they've helped hell it's even in it, it's I don't know if they translated it or not but you can buy it on a German email I mean German ebook platform I no, discovered I, my book really on a Turkish platform. platform really wow yeah, yeah. yeah. It it, it 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 threw me off. So, it's in English, but it's um, it, the the verbiage is in 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 their language. It's just that, and then then the uh, synopsis is in English because you got to understand there's English speaking people in every part of the world. That's yeah. right. So it doesn't matter what country you go to, there are people there who might be interested in something that's in English. Well, I used to get the uh, Turkish Daily News, which was a Turkish newspaper. Yeah. In English. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So yeah. So. Where was I at? Oh yeah, uh, draft digital, and um, you know, I mean, I have nine different books. And we put them all on. Oh wow, draft good. All every last one of them is now on draft digital. So, um, and I've been getting a lot of support from the promotions, and I've been getting a lot of support from the marketing people. Uh, it's it is just. I have just been floored with the response that I've been getting from them. Well, I'm so, so glad. I'm good. so glad. Yeah. Oh yeah, and 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 I have Mr. Kelly to thank for knowing <laughs> about this company in the first place. Yes. Uh, yeah. Listen, if we I actually met 
that we met at the Las Vegas Star Trek convention, and he's he told me about it then, and I looked into it, and that's how it that all started going. But he probably thought when uh, I walked away, there goes a crazy person. He stood there and talked <laughs> forever. <laughs> oh no, well, I mean, Mr. Kelly, let me tell you something. <laughs> You have very little on the craziness scale, according to me. <laughs> okay. I, you might I'm want to ask Jan that question. Then, then <laughs> we need to Here's talk. I'm about ten times higher than you are when it comes to that. So, but otherwise, I wouldn't be able to make be a comedian, a musician, a publisher, author, promoter, any of that. So, I'll shut up now. No, I mean, you know, and, and I, this is why we're doing the show today, promoting your books to the public. And one of the things I've noticed about you, of course, being the comedian might have helped with this. You're not afraid to talk to people. You're not afraid to, to look people in the eye when they walk by. You get the attention. When you were sitting there with Claudia, you you guys brought me to your table. And I don't know how to explain that other than that co eye contact's important. When people are walking by, if you want them to see your product, you've got to make eye contact. You've yep. got to make them know you're there. You yep. know, welcome them to your table. And you guys did that effortlessly. You you didn't even try. You just did it. Because there's people on the right and there's people on the left. And and when I was walking by, you guys got my attention. Oh yeah. And part of it is the the being the comedian. Part of it is the fact that I've been doing it for a number of years. Um, I'm con oddly enough, I'm sitting there constantly scanning the room, looking at people. Um, what are they buying? Are they using cash? Are they using credit cards? What do they look? What are they interested in? How you know? Yeah. I'm 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 constantly scanning the room when I'm in a convention to see what is is being looked at, and um, trying to figure out whether or not. I can fit into that situation, you know. Yeah. It's like, okay. And with you, it was it was that was just a fun conversation. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> it really was. And I really enjoyed meeting Claudia. And I'm going to try and get her on the show. Uh, we're trying to <laughs> figure out a way. Claudia is not up to the tech thing. She's not. She doesn't like tech. I don't either. No. But I've had to do it. I've had to learn. Uh, uh, well, with James, too, and something that he doesn't brag about is the fact that he has some really fantastic books out there, too, right now. But he's so busy promoting everybody else that you wouldn't know it. <laughs> so we need to help him out here well, and let people know. I do want to talk a little bit about Robert's book. Give us a synopsis. What was the book that you bought, Anthony, from Robert? Gosh, I don't even. What was the? It was the book. It was book number Hostile two. Hostile Waters. Said, yeah, Hostile, Hostile Waters. It was a. The, the second, like you said, it was the second book in the series, uh -huh. and I kind of picked it up and flipped it through it. And being a sci-fi fan, obviously, I'm at the Star Trek convention. Uh, it got my attention, and and I kind of hemmed and hawed, and I kind I, I may have walked away and then come back later and said, "Hmm, okay, I'm gonna take." Well, I'm sorry, I'm out of book one, so <laughs> uh, so I bought book two, and I says, "Okay, well." Maybe next next time around I'll get book one. Well, next year we went back and actually for three or four years in a, in a row we'd go to the convention, and he was actually one of the people we would look for because yeah. of his books. And actually, I think the third book or the fourth book we were I was just got to the convention and I was at the you know welcome to the Star Trek thing and you know on the red carpet so to speak taking a, the photo op, and he walks by and he goes hey he looks at me he goes I got the book. <laughs> and oh. I said, oh, okay. I says, we're on our way. And I mean, that's, that's, I mean, so he wasn't, you know, he was, like he says, he was scanning the audience to see who's there. We're in the middle of the hallway. Well, now, what's important here to point out is, uh, first of all, um, Robert, did you ever do a signing at their bookstore, Copper Cat Books? Not yet. Okay. I've because actually talked to him. I've actually talked to him about doing that next year yeah. while we're at the convention. Yeah, we because here's schedule. what's important to understand. Wendy called me. We were talking. About, I had gone into your store when you first opened and gave you a flyer, and and we talked a little bit. And then someone else kept talking to you about my show. So Wendy called me, and um, we were talking, and she actually said to me, can you get a hold of – because I told her I'd like to have Robert McPherson on. And she said, you know what? We met him at the StarCraft Engine. Can you get a hold of him? We need to get more copies of his, our, his book for our stores. And then that's when I realized you actually promote people. If you like their books, you actually promote the peop their books in your store. Oh, yeah, especially the local authors. We're, we're really big on that. When people come in and they're looking for a book, well, what do you, you know, what kind of book are you looking for? And we have, we've 
we have a local author shelf where we buy books from the local authors once they do their signing in the store. So we buy a few copies. We put them on the local author shelf plus in the general population so they get more exposure. So right. oh, if they're looking for sci-fi, they're not only going to see Isaac Asimov. Well, he's not going to be next to Isaac Asimov because of his alphabet, but um, <laughs> they're, they're going to see him as well as the published, the mainstream published authors. And But we try and push the local authors big time. I mean, that's a... But in, in his case, this man is in Houston, Texas, and you've really never, um, other than at the Star Trek convention, he's not been at your store. But I, what I'm getting at is even if you just like an author you and you know that they're basically self-published, and in his case, he's now got his own publishing company, you will promote them. You'll actually, because you buy their books and you put them in the store and you talk about them. And you sell them. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, that's why it's important for someone like Robert when he doing the conventions and pushing his – you don't know who's going to walk up there. You don't know who's going to walk up. Exactly. I mean, this man right. owns a no. bookstore. I have a radio show. You never know who you're talking to when they when they approach no, you. No, it's the same thing with us. We don't know who walks in the store. It's, it could be someone that's a, a cashier at McDonald's or it could be somebody that that owns a publishing house. I mean, we've had a right. lot of publishers right. come in the store. Exactly. So you, you don't know. So – it's the it's the old adage, you know. You you treat everybody as, as if it's the most yeah. important person in the world. That's to you. right. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly. You, if they're you in your store, they are the most important yeah, person. person to in, you. That's exactly and right. One thing yeah. we learned very quickly is not to judge anybody by the way they look. We have seventy year old, eighty year old men coming and looking for erotica, and ten year olds coming and looking for classics. Uh -huh. you, yeah. you don't know what that person is, and, and you don't, by the same token, you can't judge somebody by what they do for a living or how. When we don't look at them, how they're going to benefit us, it's, you know, here's a customer. How can we help them out? You know, right. find yeah. something to read. That's right. that's yeah. our difference between us and online. And I'll bet you when you go to the conventions, Robert, you do the same thing. You don't judge people before Absolutely. they walk up. Absolutely. No, I don't. I, I've, I've had people that I thought were just lucky, tight, blue kind of people, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, let me, let me buy all of them. And I'm like. Uh, there's nine <laughs> books here. Yeah, sure, all of them. Like, oh, Not a problem. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, you can do that. I can eat dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's interesting, you talk about not knowing who you're talking to. Like, I was telling you the story about Jack and, um, and his uncle, uh, Peter J. Flores. Well, this is this is coming up, and this is kind of a kind of a preview type kind of thing. But Jack has also decided to publish a book with me, oh, and uh, nice. it's it's going to be coming out sometime. I'm going to say early to mid summer. They want to have it out for the next Star Trek convention. It's called Unwanted, which this is a guy who's normally known for doing um, screenplays for television. And uh, the like, and he's he's wanting to branch out into um, writing novels now. So, and because I probably because I, I was so nice about the of gods and men, uh, he he decided that I was the publisher he wanted to have. So I was like, okay, not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, we we skipped a little bit uh, from I wanted you to talk a little bit about your books. Give us a background on on the books that you wrote. I mean, I know they're science fiction, and I know Hydrogen wrote it by Claudia science fiction. But you know, your first and second book. Why don't you give us a brief synopsis? Because we want people to to know who you are and what you write as well. Well, okay. So, six hundred years before this book first starts. There was a bombing on the surface of the planet of Pacifica. The only thing that survived were the research stations under the ocean. 600 years later, when the story starts, that civilization, I mean, those, those research stations turned into a thriving civilization. Mm. And it basically, it it's a mystery. Book one is a mystery. And um, Captain McNair, who is a technologically enhanced super soldier is sent out to um, find a missing ship. And in the process, he discovers a lot of other things, gets in the middle of a war. He's, he's um, it, it's a definite uh, submarine chase type kind of uh, book, but you really don't realize that because it still seems like space opera. Um, and 
the second book, because of what happens in the first book and the mystery is resolved, um, they decide that it's time to go back out into space. They go back out into space, and Space Station One is attacked, mm -hmm. and Captain McNair is sent out to find out who, why, if there's any allies, what's going on, and the whole nine yards. So that's what the, the first two books are about. All right, so real quick, where can we find your books? Copper Cake um, Books. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's true. That's a good lead-in right there. <laughs> Uh, right now, they're they're pretty much on any e ebook format you can get. Um, and Copper Cat books. Say, <laughs> and Copper Cat books. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the plug. And and that's mostly due to draft to digital. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna promote them too, guys. I'm sorry, cause they and Copper Cat books. Um, <laughs> But Amazon because, carries uh, the, the paperback as well? Um, well, I have been... Well, okay, let me start that over again. Okay, yeah. I have started to weed Amazon out. Okay. And uh, Hostile Waters is no longer in paperback on Amazon. All right. So where can um, they get a paperback version? Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find it. I'm pretty sure you can. Copper Cat Books. I'm but don't you sure have you a website as well? You have a website they can go to? I do. Okay. But um, you are you can find it on Lulu. Okay. Oh. There's a Lulu, there is a Lulu bookstore that you can find them on. And I'm doing that as a temporary situation. And we'll we'll find something more permanent later. And you know, but Barnes I'm, and Noble is also has their own publishing house now. They do. Yes. Wow. And in addition to that, know. yeah, you can go there as long as it's not on Amazon. And then you can also go to um, Ingram Sparks. Ingram Sparks distributes the books to the bigger stores, so you can go there and publish your book with them. But right now, if you don't have your book with Amazon, then or which is Kindle Direct Publishing, then you can go to Barnes and Noble and publish through them. Oh, oh, okay. Right, open up the well, cards. that's only hostile waters at this point. Like we're 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 weeding out Amazon. Amazon has. I'm sorry, we're talking about promotion here. But no, Amazon this is part is of the promotion. Is understanding how this all works because, in a way, when you're promoting a book, I ask you where it is. If it's not on Amazon, then we got to make sure people know where it is. Right. Um, so that is part of the promotion yeah, you, part of this. Uh, you can you can buy. The paperbacks on Lulu. There okay. is a bookstore there, and there, we're getting them all transferred over to there for right now. Um, and can they go to New Amazon Atlantic? Is, you can always go to the New Atlantic Industries website, and that, that that'll, that'll get you to where you need to be. Okay, good. That's good. And Copper Cat Books. <laughs> and Copper Cat Books. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's not forget Copper Cat Books. <laughs> we're going to turn this into a chain. <laughs> What was that name again? <laughs> yeah, you need you need to have one in Austin. <laughs> Actually, I went. I was going to go to school in Austin years ago. Well, well, that's why you need a bookstore in Austin. There you go. Wait, I went to orientation and everything. All right. Not to, not to. All right. So we got that done. We've got you promoted. We've promoted a little bit here of Copper Cat Books. I think we've mentioned it <laughs> once or twice. Uh, <laughs> but I want to talk about how important it is because I, I, we're going to talk to Anthony here for a minute, Robert. I want to ask him, what are you doing for local authors? What do you do? How do you invite them into the store? How do they set that up? How does that, that all happen, Anthony? Uh, well, most of the local authors have been hearing about hearing about us through other authors. authors. So they they will call or send an email, which I tell them, you know, we'd love to have you come into the store and do a signing, but we want you to come in in person mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that it is indeed a real person and that we can, you know, I can see a copy of the book. Um, I don't judge. I don't say you can come or you can't come based on your book. I said, basically, I say, yeah, you can come, but these are the dates I have available. Um, currently, right now, actually, Robert, he's booked for next September already. We have uh, wow, January about three quarters full, and I have people in February and March uh, already. 
Um, and it's just local authors that word spreads around and they come in and they, they talk to me and talk to my wife. Usually I'm the one that does the scheduling and it, we, pretty much every Saturday and a lot of Sundays we have local authors come in. Okay. So the, th- this is so important because right now it's very difficult to get your book in a Barnes and Nobles. And, you know, as a self-published author or a small house, oftentimes, you know, tr- a small publisher it's difficult to get those authors in the store um and more and more i'm finding that the the independent stores are willing and there's a reason why you do that you know you want you want the attention you want the local authors to bring in their friends their family the people they may know because it generates an interest in your store so there is a reason for doing it it's not just say okay come on by i mean i know you support local authors i know that's part of the reason you're doing it but it also does bring attention to your store in that you're there well we look at it as a win-win situation like you said we uh the authors come in they have their most authors are going to have a social media site their facebook page instagram google or whatever else that they're using um if they're going to do a signing uh they you know, they're going to put it out there that they're going to be at Copper Cat Books or they're going to be at, at some other bookstore, wherever, this weekend, and these are the dates. Come on down and see me. And we do the same thing. We'll, on our website, we have an events page. Uh, we have a flyer that we hand out to every customer. A lot of, typically, even if they're not paying, I, I treat it almost as a business card. I say, oh, well, since you're here, let me hand you, you know, and I'll, I'll run over to the door not literally, but I'll walk over to the door and say, here, you know, take, you know, why don't you take this? This is a list of upcoming authors that we have coming in most Saturday, you know, pretty much every Saturday and some Sundays. I said, if there's anybody you see of interest, come back and see us. Um, so we try and, you know, promote them a little bit. They promote us a little bit. So either they come into the store to buy books and the author is there and the author wins in that m- manner or they came in to see the author and, oh, geez, this is a really cool bookstore. Let me, while I'm here, I'm going to walk around. So they... They may look around and find something that they didn't know was there. It's basically just, you know, spread the word that we're here and that the authors are here. And you know what? I'm sorry. I don't think I got the name of that bookstore again. Was that Copper Cat Books? It's Copper Cat Books. <laughs> yep. All right. And um, all right. Jan, what would you like here? He's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to remind our listeners we're talking to Anthony Marcelski from Copper Cat Books, and I know I screwed that up, but that's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also talking to R. Thomas McPherson, and we are talking about, what are we talking about here? Promoting your book to the public. Yes. And one of the things that I noticed, um, Robert, that you did at the convention, the Star Trek convention where I met you, was you had a computer there. Which was smart because on that computer, you make trailers for your books. And you showed me a trailer to Hydrogen Run, which was Claudia's books, and I bought that book. So I want to talk about the importance of that. And I want to talk about how you did it because you actually did those trailers. So let's talk about a little bit about what you did and why you started doing trailers. And it had to do with you going to the movies. Yeah, I, I went to go see a movie. Actually, I went to go see uh, Infinity Wars. I hate to uh, promote that, but I did go see that. And um, it was a local theater, and it was run by local people. And they had um, – And I went there early to get a nice, good seat because I knew it was going to be busy. And they had a promotion that says, um, we promote local businesses. So I called them up, and I says, okay, um, and I had some some promotions that I had done for the audiobooks that we were working on. And they says, no, that's not going to work. It's just a picture. You've got some audio stuff. That's good. But no. So I looked into trying to figure out how to make a movie-type trailer for um, – your books. These particular promotions, yeah. And um, long story, very, very short, I discovered a program called iMovies on my iPad. And at first I was thinking it was just cut movies and stuff, but they actually have part of that that does promotional trailers. And all it is is you fill out the information, you put the clips that you want in the storyboard, and it generates the whole thing by itself. But where do you and get the clips they, from? Well, now the clips come, okay, uh, Hostile Waters specifically. 
I had been doing playing with a program for years, making small little clips for um, different promotions that I was doing. And what I did was I grabbed all of those promotions and and you know brought them in, and each one was like five, four, three seconds long. And put them in and dropped them in. And um, by the way, the the program I was using was called Bryce. Okay. Um, and I'd been doing that for years. But and when I found the iMovies thing, I just dropped them in, and it's like, oh my gosh! And that's the promotional video for um, Hydrogen Runner. I mean, nope. Sorry, for Hostile Waters. Um, the one I did for. Hurrah for the class of 05, all I did was take the cover and um, manipulate it so that it was making each of these different clips and dropped it in and it had the Ken Burns effect and stuff and all of that. So that one's nothing but pictures. I know. I noticed um, that. I watched it this morning, actually, again, and I saw that. I thought... Where is he getting these pictures from? And then when you got finished, I saw the entire cover, and then I realized, yeah. oh, he just took snippets from each part of the book and created the trailer from that one cover. From the three covers. Or three covers? For okay. the trilogy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, that's oh. a trilogy, and I, I brought the whole thing together just by taking little bits and pieces and cropping them and, and uh, making pictures and using those – as part of the clips. So it was, there's, you know, several different ways of doing it. Now with Hydrogen Runner, I have a, a combination of both. I made pictures for the different uh, scenes, and then I actually made some uh, basic audio uh, visual clips. So that one has a hybrid of the two. Ha, um, hurrah for the class is nothing but pictures. Um, Hostile Waters is uh, nothing but video. So that's how the three came together. And, and it's kind of hard to distinguish one from the other unless you really know what you're looking for. Well, because I spoke to you, when I spoke to you at the convention, you gave me the idea to try and do a trailer for my book. And you were telling me, well, you do these yourself. And I thought, well, I can't do this. So I just wanted to see what I could do. Now, I did come up with one for my book, you know, for the alien transcripts. If you go to Amazon and you go to the author, click on the author, you'll see it there. But it also, if you just go to my YouTube channel, um, Aspects of Writing on YouTube or James Kelly on YouTube, you'll find the trailer there as well for the alien transcripts. What I did, though, I like what you do, but I'm not – I this was my first one. So you got to give me, you know – leeway so oh, what i did <laughs> i went and i found clips from adobe stock and i got the clips from there and then i took some pictures and i tried to mix them both with live footage as well as pictures and then just put a little bit of music in the background but one of the things that i wanted to do and i couldn't do with the program i was using because i didn't use iMovies is what I like that you did, Robert, is that you actually can make it look like a movie in the end. You actually have the credits on the end like it was a movie. And I couldn't find that with the program I was using. So that's why I like what you're mentioning, iMovie, so people can go there and get that. So they can understand, yeah. you know, you can truly make this look like a movie. I mean, I think mine looks okay, you know, but I really like the way the title endings are with yours and the beginnings. Um, that's what I think makes it look like a movie because you said anthony you know are those movie trailers or are yeah. those book trailers yeah. and i like the idea that you're making it look like a movie because that yeah. gives someone who might see it in the future whether a producer or a director or an actor say hey man this would make a great movie yeah so yeah. that's that's why the visual part of that is important and, I, and if i have well i am going to be doing mine over but when i do mine over i'm going to try and do it in iMovies just to see if i can get that effect how oh di yeah how difficult is it iMovies to learn not difficult at all. You, you, it has several different choices for themes. You choose one. You open it up. It has two different basic menus. There we go. Um, one of them is just putting in information. The other one is the storyboard, and it shows you, okay, you have this clip, this clip, and this clip. 
you have some words, you have this clip list, and you just fill it in, and it generates it from that. So it's not like it's real difficult yeah, to do. It sounds pretty sophisticated and easy, too. Yeah. Oh, it, it makes it very sophisticated. It looks very sophisticated, but it's extremely easy to do. Um, I, I made a video from, by the way, you can use these whenever you want, Mr. <laughs> Kelly. All right. On any, any format you'd like, go to YouTube, whatever. Anyway, by the way, I made um, a video of the Star Trek convention just as a fun thing to do and took all the pictures I had and just put them on there and, and, and made myself look funny and silly. And by the way, I yes. had, and I, I put this on my, <laughs> we're not going to go. <laughs> oh yeah, please go. Uh, I put this on my social website and it had, I, it's been two, two months now and it has over 4,000 hits on it. And that oh, surprised me because I never promoted it. Yeah. At all. Wow. Well, you don't know? be surprised if one of your little um, trailers ends up in, in one of my videos. Oh, please use it. All right. Go ahead. You have all my permission to use any and all videos that you can get from me. Okay. And I'll, I'll go back in time and see what I can find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you may be sorry you said that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and it might make them wealthy. <laughs> Well, that's true, too. I yeah. Might... <laughs> uh, all right. So it's extremely easy to use. Well, so that's what good. you did is so important, though, that you took that to the convention because that got my attention for Claudia's book. I mean, not that yeah. I, talking to you didn't get my attention as well, but then when you said, I want to show you something, it draws you in even further because instead of her just sitting there telling me the story or I'm reading it on the back of the book, it gives me a visual you know, to go by. And that really does help in selling that book. And I bought her book because of that. Uh, so, you know, it really is an effective tool. And I think everyone, I will start using this. Um, we have an event coming up in April of next, in, of 2019, April 27th, second annual Aspects of Writing, picnic and book launching, which hope, I, I'm going to invite oh, you now. Yeah. Hopefully you can show up for it. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a tent oh, cool. for you. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to use that. I'm actually going to have my little computer out there, and, and I'm going to be – I'll have a trailer ready and show the trailer of my book well, there, because I think that's smart. Every one of us have a, has a laptop, so we could have this on every table. Yeah, really. Yeah. Everyone should – I'll try and encourage everyone to do this. And, yeah. And we'll, we'll say that Robert McPherson gave us the idea. Right. Oh, she so. can, well, she, you, can make a, you, know, you can make a trailer of your picnic, too. True. Yeah. Oh, next, yeah. For the next year. And if anybody needs any help, just have them just say, "Hey Bob, what the what? The, how did you do that?" <laughs> exactly. Uh, we'll send them your way. People. Send them my way, sure. All right. And use any video I have. I, I you have my permission. Okay. Well, this is going to be fun. Yeah, and one of the things I want to ask as well is, Anthony, when you have someone in your store, what do you do different? Because I know I've been to your store when, like, I know Vicky Ann Bush was there and Linda Styles. Fox, and they had like hors d'oeuvre trays, you know, with cheeses and stuff like that. How often does that happen, or is well, that just for a launching? That was that was our grand opening okay. uh, celebration. Typically, during the regular author signings, we don't. We were gonna have it catered or have a, a meat plate or something. A lot of the authors will bring in snacks or something like that, and we always have stuff at the counter that we, you know, when people buy something, oh, would you like a little treat? And it's like Hershey Kisses or, yeah. you know, uh -huh. so that kind of thing that we give people. It's kind of our signature, assuming I don't eat all the chocolate, which is my downfall, <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose. We have snacks over here for you, by the way, Anthony. <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, that's why they're over there. <laughs> but no, we we probably, uh, that's the only time we've done it, you know, at, that we've catered the event, but we're thinking maybe in December when it's our one-year anniversary having a author weekend uh my wife and i are still kind of talking about what we want to do just to maybe contact all the authors that have been here over the year mm -hmm. and have them come in and say okay well this is we're going to do this for the whole weekend um you know would they come in in the morning in the afternoon and have three or four authors at a time maybe just walk around if they want to walk around and socialize and they, you know we'll have uh, meat and cheese plates and stuff like that for that that's what we're thinking of doing mm, for that's that. that's a very good idea yeah. yeah yeah try and make an a regular event instead of just a book signing have it a full-fledged event so I want to ask you, Robert, do you go to any of the local stores there? In Are you in Austin or in Houston? Austin. Austin. Um, I know I said Houston earlier. Yeah, so in Austin, do you? There is a lot of little 
stores around Austin called Half Price Books. And I have gone to a lot of them and, hey, I'm an author. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll put a couple of books on your, your, your counter for consignment. And I've been amazed at what kind of response I've gotten from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're very receptive because they're a, it, it's actually a chain, quote unquote, but they're individually operated and owned, and they basically enjoy having somebody that can come in and say, oh, I'm a local person, and this is what I do. So, you know, you're it, just that you're... has been. No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, <laughs> go ahead, Robert. I was going to say that's been my my real only outlet. Um, trying, I've tried all kinds of bookstore chains, and they're just not going to do that kind of thing. Well, and, and that's what I was going to say. You just reiterated what we said earlier in the sense that you know I think the bigger stores are missing the mark. You know, it, right. it's the local authors that people want to meet. They can't meet. They can't always get one day off a week to go meet someone, you know, um, like an Anne Rice or a Grisham or, you know, it's it's right. really hard to, to get that time off to go do it. Whereas the local authors, you know, they can they'll know when they're going to be here in, in advance. You know, they know there's usually more than one event for that author. Right. People want to yeah. meet authors. They do. Yes. And and in some ways, they're their own little superstar. Yeah. Um, I remember going into your, the opening of your store. I was there for that day. Yep. And, you know, people, they do talk to you like you're a superstar. And right. you don't, you know, I mean, I don't feel like I am. But, you know, the point is, is that they make, they want to, they, it's like, I met this person. I think the hope is, and I know I was like this when I would go buy a book as well. The hope is, is like, if this is a small author, I'm hoping that one day they become this you know, million selling yeah. author and I right. can say I met them when, right. you know, and right. I think that's part yeah. of it. You know, it, it really is part of it is saying, yes. you know, I knew them when. Yes. Well, part of, I think the attraction for authors is if you're an author, you're a storyteller. And one of the authors that we've had in the store several times, and I'm sure you know him, Two Bears Medina. Oh, yeah, I know. He's I been mean, on yeah. the show. He, he's, yeah. love he's, him. He's, a, he's a great storyteller. Now, he's a talker. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, and, I love he, will, and he will <laughs> talk. He, I mean, I mean, at, most people can talk to, you know, talk your ear off about anything, but he's, he's a pleasure to talk to, and yeah. he invites you into the conversation. A lot of people that are talking to you, that are telling a story, you're just a listener, but he'll go along and he'll say, right. okay, well, what do you think, you know, and he'll invite you into the story, yes. and he just has a, a manner about him that's, he doesn't rush, he talks slow, not right. because he's slow, but just because he... He's just a good storyteller. Yeah, he, he is, is a storyteller. He, he's Apache yes. Indian, and it's almost like the, it's like a he it's in his, it's in his genes that you know sitting around the campfire telling this long story, and yeah. he, he draws you in, and it's and I think that's what a lot of authors do. Yeah, and and you're right. He he is very good at what he does. Um, he's he should be out to promoting more. Yes, uh, you know for because they're going to be doing a series of books. He wrote he wrote a book called Itchy the Goat. With Sue Montgomery, yeah, and I think it's going to be a series of ten books. Ten. Um, so you know, hopefully we'll hear more from him. But he's also supposed to be doing a reality show too. I think I don't know if that well, is. he's involved in writing screenplays. He plus he has his own business, Apache RV, where he refurbishes right. RVs. I mean, he's he's involved in a lot of things. Yeah, talk about somebody that's burning the candle at both, both ends. ends. <laughs> it's like it's like he's at. You know, he's he's the the campfire with the logs that you keep pushing in. You know, he's got more than one stick in there. Fire. And I think that's part of what we were just yeah. talking about is you know we get to know these people um, as they're starting out. We we talked about uh, Stephen Murray mm -hmm. and before the show, and we talked about how Stephen Murray was on my show um, four years ago. It was his first radio interview. He did not have a Facebook page. He did not have a website. A, a website, you know, to promote his book at all. He wasn't on Amazon. He didn't had nothing. He had the book published, but he had no way of marketing it. And today we were talking about how he he sets this thing up where you know he gets the authors to come in once a month and present their book at different facilities. Um, he's part of a writers group. He's you know he does all these things now so that involved. four years ago. Yeah. I don't even think he could imagine he would be doing now. Oh, and he's very well known and very well liked among the lo amongst the local audience. Right. So it, it is amazing to see what someone can do, and sometimes in a short amount of time, in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah. 
So, you know, it, it, that's the fun part of, of actually, this, that's why I enjoy what I do. Uh, we just interviewed Rome um, Cupido from um, Helsinki, and Finland, and they're getting ready to do a movie on her life. We interviewed Rone, Rome Masters, and she wrote a book called Peace Train, and they're making that into an independent film. Yes. I mean, so it's amazing to see the journey that these people take, and I think that's part of what want, why people want to come and meet the local author. And right. that's why I, I really do praise the local independent bookstores who open their arms to you know, local authors yes. and invite them in. Yes. And I think they're doing a, uh, you know, a service to themselves by doing so. Um, because they can always say, oh, I met them at Copper Cat Books. And yeah. so that will encourage people to go there right. and meet these authors right. in the future. And your Barnes & Noble, they're just not as open to the local authors. They're restricted to how many um, you know, they can have in a year. Yeah, yeah. you were going to say something, Robert? No, I, I've actually, they are being even more um, back offish nowadays. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with them, but Barnes & Noble just refuses to have anybody that's quote-unquote published through CreateSpace. Well, they don't even want people through CreateSpace. You have to be through Ingram Sparks now yeah. because yeah. they what they want to go through a distributor, and Ingram is a distributor. Um, and that's why they're very picky. And as a matter of fact, even then with consignments, they're only allowed so many consignments a year. So that's why it's difficult for the independent or local author to get into the stores. And, oh, yeah. you know, I really do think that they're doing a disservice to themselves. Well, what I had one local author tell me, or not, told me that what the people will do in Barnes & Noble, because you cannot get into their store being a small author, they'll go and take their books and put them on the shelf. Aha. Uh -huh. And when the people, people pick it up and they go to check out and it's got a barcode and it scans it, no, oh, not found. Well, they call right. the manager over, manager says, oh, okay, well... Just you know, use a generic code or whatever, and we'll see about getting this into the system. <laughs> and that's how. They, Actually, that's very smart. They, they, oh. So they, so now all of a sudden, Barnes and no they say, "Oh, Barnes and Noble selling my book." <laughs> 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 and you know, but that's how they that's how they get Barnes and Noble to start picking up because I said, "Well, geez, this book was in there, but it's not in our system. What the heck's going on?" Well, I hate to do this, gentlemen, but we're down to the last minute of the show. And Robert, once again, where can we find your books? Um, you can find my books on. NewAtlanticIndustries.com. And they can, for any mm -hmm. questions any of the authors might have, they can just go to NewAtlanticPublishers.com or New Industries, Atlantic New Atlantic Industries. 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 Right. There is, there is a question section there that they can send me, me, me emails. And uh -huh. Anthony, yes. where is your store located? We are in Henderson, Nevada, um, on Horizon Ridge Parkway between Valley Verde and Arroyo Grande Boulevard across from the U.S. Post Office, which is our, a great landmark for us, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'd like to encourage all of our listeners to write to us. Let us know what you think. You know, If you want us to discuss something on the show, just let us know what topic you would like. If you're an author, whether you're a newbie or an experienced, we'd like to have you on the show. Just Send us a go to the um, contact page on aspectsofwriting.com and send us a note. We'll try and get you on the show. It uh, doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in New York, London, Helsinki. Again, we can interview you from anywhere. Uh, yep. Right, Robert? And <laughs> right. <laughs> where, wherever. <laughs> wherever you are, we come to you. Uh, I would like to thank our guest, um, Anthony. Well, thank you for Anthony, Everything. give us a, your last name again. One more time. You say it. You say it better than Marcisovsky. There we go. Good slide. And R. Thomas McPherson, along with my co-host Janet Corsi. So to find links to our show, just go to aspectsofwriting.com. That's aspectsofwriting.com. There you will also find a video and an archived show. Um, we're on YouTube. We're also on amfm247.com. They syndicate our show to many, many, many different outlets. I heart. Um, iHeart, iTunes, I, I think we're on Apple now, TuneIn, uh -huh. you name it, we're there. Yeah. Um, I also put the show on Blog Talk Radio on Sundays at 9 p.m. We're on amfm247.com on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time or Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Blog Talk again is at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Sundays. And we archive all the shows again on all of our shows, but they're also archived on amfm247.com. Yes. And until next week, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding you, if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you, everyone, for being on the show today. Well, nice meeting you. you, gentlemen. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Robert, see you.